So we'll start. Okay, Lucas. All right. How you doing? Not too bad. How are you? Good. Yeah. So, little backstory. So you've you've been having what lessons with another instructor? Yeah. And how many hours do you, would you say you've done so far? Um, I think we're getting near test ready. I'd say probably about thirty hours, give or take. Okay. And is there anything um, from your lessons that you'd like to work on today that you can think of that's sort of come up with your previous instructor? Yeah, um, following road signs, that's one. Um, okay. And uh, speed limits. Yeah, being aware of speed limits. All right, so let's talk about speed limits. So In the uh, car, sometimes when I'm going along, that's... I'm not realising that's happening, I'm slowly creeping over and we're building and building and then all of a sudden my instructor goes, whoop, 50 here or 40. Oh, so you're, what, you'll be in a 30 limit and you find yourself... Creeping over, but that's like very slow and steady. With a heavy right foot. Heavy right foot, Have you got yeah. a limiter on this car? Uh, there is a limiter on this car, yeah. So to use it? I do know how to use it, yeah. So we, just, we can try that today, that has solved your yeah. heavy right foot. And do you know how the limiter works? Yeah, we did have a look at that, but... Thinking about the limiter, but if what about if one day when I get a car, which isn't as um, up to date like this, how could I work my oh, technique? So you'd like to, to do it the, I'd like to do it like the, the manual way. Yeah, the, yeah. the old okay, fashioned the way. more skillful way. I'd like to okay. learn the skill first because then this could come with experience. So now we need we need to talk about acceleration sense. Yes. So we we'll do that. Yeah. So we we tune your right foot. So you just keep at the speed limit by visually keeping an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. And then if you like, we can compare, try the limit and, and see what you think. Because yeah. if you've got a limiter, you know, you can just use it. I worry about the limiter because that can kind of create the heavy foot because I'll be resting on it and I ain't going to go over it unless I really floor it. All right, so we'll do it without a limiter. Then if you like, you can do a comparison with it. Brilliant, And yeah. see what you think. Yeah, sound good. So, yeah, so let's t- talk to me about the speed limit. So how do you know what the speed limit is in any given road? You know, how you judge, like... So what's your understanding of speed limits and how they work? Well, speed limits for the red circle, white background, black digits, that's law. Shouldn't be going over it. So, so if you're in a road that you haven't seen any speed limit signs... And you're not sure. You're thinking, oh, I don't know what speed limit is here. How would you know? What you, what cl- other clues apart from General signs? General rule of thumb: if I see street lights, I'm thinking 30 miles per hour. Good. Residential area. Yeah. Does it have to be a residential area? If there's street lights and um, there's signs. Uh, I don't know what's supposed to be now. So yeah, if, if basically if there's a system of street lights, it'll be 30 unless stated otherwise. Yeah. Just keep it simple because okay. there won't always be houses. Uh, in fact, we'll give you an example of that today. I'll show you where go down a road with yeah. that will look at that. Yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be, be good. good. Yeah. And um, and if you're on a road and there aren't any street lights and no speed signs, then what is it? How are you going to know? Sorry, so if I'm on a road... So if you're on a road, yeah. you don't know what the speed limit is. There's no street lights and there's no signs. What would it be? Um... Any road, there's no street lights, but there's no signs. You're like, oh, what speed limit? National? Yeah. So it was a single carriageway, what would that be? That's 60, that is. And it was a dual carriageway? That is 70. Great, so unless stated otherwise. Unless stated otherwise, yeah. Unless stated otherwise. Is there are field there, dual carriageways, one of both, or that's 40 miles per hour. Or so if there are no street lights, what would you expect to see? Um, yeah, national speed limit. That one has if, it was 40, if it was 40, though, what would, how would they let you know that's 40 then? There would be a law sign. Yeah, and repeaters. Board, do, and you know repeaters. What, do you understand like the, the difference between a repeater sign and a, like a, the start of a speed limit? How do you recognise when a speed limit starts? Yeah, the start of it is big diameter, and the little repeaters are smaller so, diameter. And normally you get a pair of them. Not always, though. A pair of big ones. Yes. And then repeaters every stag of every so on. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. All right, so cool. So we'll uh, so we we'll, we'll, we'll start with that then, shall we? All right. And just yeah, just a quick question, just to, to yeah, just to dig into your understanding is like yeah, why why is it important to keep to the speed limits? Well, people tend to say to you know oh you don't want to be getting caught speed and that's going to cost you a lot of money, but I think safety more than like yeah. payment. I think that's people's it. lives are at risk here, and I need to be in control of this, and I need to have the skill to 
to keep yeah. it up within the law. Good. I'm glad you said that. And what in the highway code? What does the highway code say about you know, regardless of your speed, what the speed limit is? Mm -hmm. What must you always be able to do? in any given situation. Yeah, my instructor's quite hot on this one, the previous one. He said that you need to be able to stop this car well within the distance you can see to be clear. That's it. So in an area like this, what could we enter Saturday morning? What could you anticipate around here? Do you tend to see a lot of dog walkers around here? Yeah, and are kids at school? Not today. Could They're they off. be out playing? Yeah, they could be. So yeah. There is actually a house around the corner where kids are literally always running out on the road. And that does, uh, that does pose a bit of a problem, but... So if you're driving at an appropriate speed, that yeah. you could stop well within the distance, seems to be clear, then, then we're then we're nailing it. Very typical of hazard perception, isn't it? Yeah, so are you are you happy to... We've got some goals there, we've, we can look at your use of speed, mm -hmm. driving at an appropriate speed, and we'll have a look at you getting your acceleration, little accelerator sense. Mm -hmm. And anything else that comes up? Yeah, oh, when you good. said you want to follow some signs, we can do that as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely follow some signs, because I need right. to be aware of these, rather than going, oh, I missed the sign, where am I going? Yeah, I can get you to do that. A bit of, like, forward planning is going to be a good one, I think. All right. Yeah. Yeah, no Brilliant. problem at all. So, are you ready? Are you all set up? I'm ready. Okay, if you're ready, you can start the engine. And drive on. When you're ready. Okay. So at the end of the road, Lucas, if you could turn right. Okay, we'll do. And also, Lucas, if you've got any questions as we're going along, if there's a situation you're not sure of that dealt with before, ask me and I can give you a hand, okay? okay well, this is your lesson, so we'll tailor it to whatever you feel you know, if, if there's anything you're not sure of, or if you make any mistakes, we can look at those, have a chat. So, at me. the end of the road here, if you can turn left. Okay. So, where you've got a junction like this without road markings, who would you, who would have priority in that situation, do you know? Well, <clears throat> am I right in saying if there isn't road markings, no one's really got priority? Correct. However, I do appear to look like I'm coming out of a minor onto a major because I have. If you just treat it as no road markings, there's no signs there, just no one's got priority, okay? Okay. So, like, you know, later in the year when it snows, if it snows, and all the road markings are covered up, just never assume priority. So, like, as you come up to this little junction, who would have priority through here? Well, there's no road markings, there's no body. Yeah, so you'd still be looking. Yeah. So I'd like to say the next. No, I don't. No, I'm the last. <laughs> no, follow the road. I can ahead. follow it round. You can turn left, and I'll take you to the next round of road. Okay, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new round here. At the end of the road, turn left. Okay. You know, you would know this better than me because you live here. Good. Good work there, Lucas. I actually did that on purpose, just to see what you thought about it. And you the, did, because I had no one behind me. At the roundabout, I'd like to turn right. Okay. And just a quick question, mm -hmm. what's the speed limit in the new road? In the new road, I've just spotted that, 40 mile an hour. Okay. So sorry to cut you dead on the no, um, pedestrian right. thing. Yeah. Just that I needed to give you a direction, yeah. I wanted to ask you about speed limit. That's right. But yeah, we can cut. We'll come back to the pedestrian scenario. Because are you clear on like who gets the priority at a junction when there's pedestrians waiting? They haven't stepped out on the road, but I wanted to let them across, so I just thought if they get out of the way, they're safe. They had a little boy. Yeah. Did you feel it was safe to do it? Well, I did check, there's no one behind me. If there's someone's right behind me, I don't think I'd have That's done that. good, that's good. But then you feel like you're being pushed by that person behind you, don't you? Yeah, so you don't want to bring in the brakes suddenly or confuse people. So I need to give you a direction. Yep. So what I'd like to do with the traffic lights, I'd like to turn right. So have you dealt with like temporary lights before? 
Yeah, we've come up through this, but this keep changing a little bit the configuration of the barriers. So, so when you're going through roadworks, how are you, when they've changed the road layout, how will you know where to go? What's what are you looking for? Well, that blue sign's the the one you know keep me to the left. Great. And um, just take it easy, really, because. So look, it could even change now, look, what's going on now with the, the workmen? That suggests to me there's a fault with them. Uh, oh, so we could be a while. Yeah, this has happened one to one, I'm coming out of roll now, this happened to me one more in the work. You I was just stay in roll, just oh. like, you've, you have lessons here every week, so has this happened yeah. before then? Yeah, yeah, he's just done it, always turned it off. So if they've turned them off, what could, what might he do? To help this situation, what could you look for? I'm waiting for that to change because it'll, it'll override the system, I think. But I'm waiting for that. If that traffic stopped, then I'm getting ready to think about setting the car to go. Yeah. If a workman in high vis gave you a direction or waved you free, could you do that? Yeah, because he, yeah. he's he been given the okay from his colleague. That's it. I'd like to think so, anyway. So, okay, so as we go into the new road, Start having a look. Are there any changes of speed in there? So we're turning right. Okay, I'll look over that. See these cars are edging forwards. Mm -hmm. If they were to go through now, would you follow them? No. No, I'm not going to follow Sue. Mm. Now we're in a dilemma. Okay. Lucas, I'm going to give you a direction and so say follow through. Follow through. Now treat this junction as a giveaway because we're not on a green light, okay? So adhere to the giveaway okay, road markings. And can you see clearly? Yeah, someone's coming. That's it, so we'll just wait here. Now they want to turn in, so this can be awkward. So you creep forwards and just wait here, that's it. Have they got room to come through? No, I think Lee, because I'm going to take this. There you go, look, we're done. So now that, that that's quite good, that happened. I was like, now I can see, well, how would you deal with it? I mean, I've never had that in my fucking life. Well, I would, I would do what i just done. Like, I'd go through and treat it as a good way. Yeah. Maybe we can position more to the left to let that car in, anticipating that. Yeah. Okay, Lucas. Look for any, if you see any speed limit signs, uh, let me know. Good, so now you're in a 30. Can you use your acceleration sense to keep near to 30, but adjust your speed based on any hazards that you see? Why did you come in here slow? Well, I did it because I'd like to keep the wheels moving, but sometimes people get right arsy behind. What is the benefit of keeping those wheels rolling coming up to a fuel red line? Economy costs a lot of money for you. Yeah, so is that a good thing? I think it's a good thing, but I not think it's a good thing. I feel they will push me, come up to light, so I feel it's good. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah. So, would you use more fuel if you raced up to the lights, stopped, and then had to move off again? Bloody brakes get worn out. Yeah, so what you did there was good. Keep doing that, that's good 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 planning, fuel efficient driving. Yeah, I like it. So okay, so Lucas, let's say you didn't know what the speed limit was, you're not sure, you've missed those signs. What clues have you got in this road to tell you what the speed limit is? Well for starters we're in a residential area but we've got a lot of street lights on it. So what would it be? That's going to be fair. 
And if you glance into side roads, could there be any clues in side roads if, if, as to what this big bit might be? Have you ever talked about that? New road, new roads. But if you glance into this side road, when we get to it, just after that, let's have a little glance in and see if there's any changes of speed on you. Yeah, 20. So if that's 20, could this be 20? What, this bit here? Yeah. No. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. So we know that this isn't the 20. That's about all we can do is deduct that this isn't the 20. Yeah, I'll treat it as like a threshold if you want to go over that. You're then in the zone, aren't you? Let's see, let's see. You're doing a great job with your speed, Lucas. Yeah, I've been trying to do that. I'm trying to not stop the car. So we're into a new road. Question: What's the speed limit? Thirty. Okay, good. It is. What clues have we got? So we've got some street light. Yeah, is it residential? It's not residential. Are there street lights? Yeah. So what is it? You say you've already told me. Yeah. So does it need to be residential? It's like, because I said we'd look at an example. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So here, here you go. So if you can tell me if you see any changes of speed limit oh, coming up. What's picking up? Man. That's no. it, yeah. So you just, so we can get your speed under control. So you got up to 33 there, didn't you, coming down the hill? So, you know, I, I tried to ask my previous instructor, and I have no spot that speed limit, so I'll get that sorted. I said, like, is there other ways I can slow this cut up without using the brakes? And he said, like, well, you have got the paddle shift, but I don't want you using that. You don't want to use them? I would like to, but he said you can use engine brake, but I don't want you using them. Okay, so well, let's, let's, let's use that, because that's going to help you. Do you understand, like, how the gears work in lower gears and what, what well, happens in the car? Yeah, because I, I did a manual, like, like it. and I know if you put in a lower, a lower gear you, you get the high revs and that feels like it's really pulling you down and getting that engine braking but so question do you know what gear the car is in now even though you're in an automatic yeah he did say uh, top right corner it's in E3 so we're in third gear okay so if you're going down a hill mm -hmm. what would you want to use a higher or a lower gear to control your speed that's going to want to be lower, isn't it? A lower gear. So should we try that? We're going to go down in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I see if we follow this route, yeah. And which paddle is the downshift? Do you know which one? Which side it is? Well, I'll do a bit of racing, uh, sim racing, so it's going to be a left, isn't it? It'll be the same in this car, yeah. So, and what's the benefit of using your gears to slow the car? What do we call that? Do you know what they call that? Technique. That's it. So you get your speeds, mm -hmm. and now, once you get around this car, just ease off, ease off, slow down, okay. use your brakes, okay. and just downshift one gear. Yeah. So you're in fourth now, so manual, and now so brake, yeah. go down to seconds, before this bend. So brake, mm -hmm. seconds, off your brakes, and now feel as you go around this corner, how does the car feel? Does it feel more controlled? Not much control, I don't know. So keep more to the left, because you're right up on that solid line. Yeah. So can you use your engine brake coming down here. Just think when it's winter and it's icy, this yeah. will be a better, better gear to use, isn't it? Yeah. At the roundabout, I'd like you to turn right, okay? Okay. some more signs, I'd like to put a signs for Thetford.
halfway behind traffic. Mm -hmm. Do you know what sort of gap you should be leaving between you and that car? Uh, no, I don't think I've actually been spooked earlier. Oh, well, the same. I'll let you concentrate on this. We'll come back to that. I'll let you deal with this junction, okay? Yeah, so don't, don't worry that you've missed a sign. Well, yeah. in fact, you didn't miss a sign. If you were following signs for Swatham, well done. Because oh, you were on track there. Yeah, I just, Not a problem. You said Thetford, but I just had it because the first one we talked about was Swatham. <clears throat> so that was... Um, this, don't you, yeah. It's absolutely fine. So you, mm -hmm. you were going for Swatham. Happy with that. So well done. So oh, okay. good, you've done that. Yeah. So yeah, a couple of things that have just come out of that. We talked about leaving a gap when stopping behind traffic mm -hmm. so I asked you a question then I we never really finished that so just quickly how much gap should you be leaving oh they're gonna drive off now I need them <laughs> okay <laughs> why they're there mm -hmm. this is the sort of gap that you would look to leave it seems quite far it's about a car length okay, okay. and what it gives you is enough room to get out. So if you were stuck in traffic, mm -hmm. what would be the benefit of being able to have enough room to get out? Why would um, we want to do that? Well, imagine if everyone did that. Imagine you, you were right in close to the car in front. The car behind you does the same and so on and so forth. So we're all wedged in and then the ambulance comes down the road. Mm. How are we all going to get moved and sort of make way for the ambulance to get through on a, on a lane? Or... Oh, I saw. I have seen this before when I was walking through the city. People were right close, and the ambulance was trying to get through, and he just couldn't. He was stuck. There's just yeah. no one could move. That's uh, it. Okay. Or if you were, uh, if someone give you a shunt from behind yeah. when you're waiting at the lights, where are you going to go if you've got a, a short gap in front of you? Mm. If you're here, yeah, straight to them. And whose insurance is paying for their car? Yours. Really? You hit them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh so it's just a bit of wiggle room so we yeah. can get out. And how do you judge it? <coughs> well my visual aid has gone now. So when he was in front of us, that mm -hmm. car, could you see a little bit of road? 
what underneath their tyres. Yeah, could you see a little bit of road and their tyres sitting yeah, on Yeah, I can the... definitely see that. It probably broke like that much underneath their tyres. So that's how you can judge it. So next time you come up to a, a, a stop situation where you've got cars in front of you, just leave that room to get out. See, and the way to judge it is so you can see those tyres and tyres. Oh, tyres and tyres, mate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, tyres on the road, just a little bit, a little <coughs> bit of road in front of you. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, that's good. Happy with that? Yeah, you explained that a bit better. I was my instructor when I was coming up to things. If I did something, I didn't know why you were saying road and rubber. And then that's be it. And I just didn't oh, know okay. why you were saying that. I am, yeah, okay. So, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. So, are, well, are you... explained it like you did. Are you happy to move on? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, that speed bump. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about that now. So, we're in, in a road with um, speed humps. Mm. So, why do you think they've put them there? Keep make sure people don't go over 20. Yeah, it's the they're traffic calming measures. So, what other apart from speed humps, what other traffic calming measures can you get to physically make cars slow down? What well, those bits that come yeah, in? Little pinch points. Pinch points, yeah. So, if you see traffic calming, drive in accordance to the speed. So, it normally it'll be a 20, but not always. Okay. okay. So yeah, so let's think about the consequence of hitting a speed bump like that too hard. What's that going to do to your little old car? Well, that did sound quite severe, didn't it? Yeah. That's not, that's not going to be good for your suspension. <laughs> or my, my suspension. Well, my instructor never really said anything to me. Just like, if we got the turn boys, I'd, I'd kind of feel the brake go down a little bit, but we'd go on. I just assumed that perhaps that was... Perhaps I was going over the speed limit, I don't know. Yeah, <clears throat> so we want to minimise, we don't want to damage our car. So that's why they put them there, to make you slow down. Like, because people don't like damaging their car because they're expensive. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so should we, uh, let's have a go, because there'll be some traffic coming in this road. Okay. And then if you're looking well ahead, mm -hmm. as soon as you see some China traffic coming, I want you to tell me and and react accordingly. Okay. To sort of, so you get your, the correct speed for the conditions. All right. Happy? Yeah. When you're ready, try. And the question about the highway code and the cyclists, I don't, did we ever, did we finish that one? Did we, did we, did we? No, did we, we didn't. You had to give me a direction. It's a metre and a half. A metre and a, a half. A metre and a half. So about the width of this car. So the, oh, okay. Say how the jug. I kind of like said to you, was that enough? And That's you did so, say, yeah. But so have a look. Tell me when you see your next traffic calming measures. That one. So that's what you do. I'll just say lift it off. Good. Probably a little bit. A little, little bit of break, yeah. Because yeah. they look quite severe. Is and that look, in, look, yeah. That's, that felt beautiful, didn't it? Okay. Look into the distance. Where's your next traffic calming? What's in the road up is that there? A pinch point? That is. It's quite hard to see. That was shaded. And oh, we got another. I see it hidden in the shade. So now at this speed, does this feel like an appropriate speed for this road? Yeah. It does. Yeah, because I mean, I'm only doing 15 brakes, man. A little bit there, a yeah. little bit on the brakes. Yeah, there. Okay. Yeah. Good. Like that. It's better, isn't it? Yeah. Better for your car, and is it better for little kiddies that might run out between yeah, these cars? Yeah, it's quite a toy street, isn't it? How do you feel about like me moving forward to get in? Look, my instructor don't like me doing it, so I want you staying in the driving position. Well, what's the benefit of you moving forward? I feel forward? like I can see more, but he just gets on to me. Well, that's what you should be doing then. You know, looking here into gaps at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right. I think that's why I decided to call you up. I think you're starting to get on my nerves. So we talked about pedestrians, didn't we? So Thank we're going to turn right. If you just come to a pause here, just come to a, a stop. Yeah. So just so I can ask you that question. If you're coming up to a T-junction like this, there's someone mm. behind us, um, pedestrians waiting mm. to cross the road. Who would have priority? Waiting or already on the crossing? Waiting. Well, I kind of like... So make eye contact. Yeah, mate. Yeah. They do. All yeah, right, so we won't see her yeah. too long. So pedestrians will have priority to cross this road. Yeah. So you can hold back like you've done to let them cross. If they don't, then you can move up and deal with the junction. So well, I'd like you now to turn right. Yeah, so that's a good point. If they, if they can just keep standing there looking at me and I'm looking at them. Yeah, if someone's got to go, we can't just sit there all day, can we, being yeah. polite? Yeah,
drop curbs or driveways on this occasion, okay? Also Just can, can pretend he now. was pretend that was a queue of traffic and you're leaving another gap. So in fact, just pull up before here, just pull up near the high curb because we're going to let this guy get out. Just come to a stop here. So I don't want to, I don't want to confuse this silver car. Their doors open. Oh, so their doors open. So in light of that, we won't do it because there just conflicts with them. They're like, what's going on? So, um, so we'll do that another time. But mm -hmm. question for you, yeah. at the end of the road, we're going to turn right. Okay. So are there any signs you need to be aware of here? Caution, pedestrian priority head. Mm. We've just been talking about that, haven't we? Mm. So what I'd like to do, end of the road, turn right. Okay. Fill your boots to make a mistake here, Lucas. Mm -hmm. Just pop your handbrake on for seconds. So, okay, so this is what we're talking about, this sign. But before we talk about that, were there any other signs here? Is this junction a give way or a stop junction? Do you know? Um, well, it's got dashed lines. It's got a solid line. There's a sign just, just gone past the solid line that says stop. Oh, I didn't see the sign, but... Yeah, so we've just gone over that stop line. But these lines do look dashed. That's for coming in. There's a solid line here. Oh. You've, you're over the solid line. So we must. So stop. the curbstone is actually treating that as a solid line. Do you, should we go around and have another look at this yeah, one? Yeah. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now you've stopped. Yeah. I want you to look for pedestrians and cyclists that may be using the footpath. Okay. And then if you can't see, can you see? I can see. There's a limit to what I can see. So now you can creep onto the footpath to get your vision. Okay, once you've checked the footpath's clear. Yeah. That's it. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to give you directions. What I'd like to do, if you could take the next road on the right. So what you do, know, we've sort of touched on it, like with the jogger. So when you go around a cyclist, what are you anticipating they might do? Just come off it. Yeah. Just come flying off are they going to drive through potholes or ride through potholes? Well, I don't think we do. Yeah. So they might change direction, might they? Mm. On a windy day. Yeah. What might happen? So that was a good speed through there. I'll let you concentrate on this because what, what would you do if you meet an oncoming vehicle here? What, who would have well, priority? Yeah, kind of what I try to look to get a bit of a look. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if they're already committed through this, we, we have to kind of let them through, don't we? And what would you be looking for? If there was a car like coming to the road now, what, what was plan B? What would you be looking for? I'm looking for little bits I can dip into. Good. So at the end of the road, if you could turn right, And just tell me if you'd met a pedestrian waiting on the footpath at the corner here. Oh, who would have oh, look at that that's lovely. Little... So wait, eye contact. And if if they decided not to cross, what would you do? Oh, we can't wait here forever. Can then we? you'd go up and turn away. Does that make sense? Yeah, I do. Well, yes. You kind of feel like you want to with a little child, don't you? Because we're yeah. kind of stopping cars from just going. And we're keeping them safe, aren't we? So this is bringing us back to the road we were 
between the junction we talked about a little while ago. So I'm going to dip into this little bit here. Good, yeah, lovely. space if there wasn't a door with what would you do would you not go through or would you think well i'll have to go through we have to go through some road yeah so what would you do with your speed to compensate for that? Well, i just felt i needed to be slower right now it's probably not up to the speed limit but okay what i'd like to do if you could just put in on the left just near this telegraph pole would be great just this next telegraph pole on the left so they're still gas, are not they? I was hoping to do the thing again, but oh well, never mind. That we'll come back to the leaving the gap. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that junction that you just did. So as you are looking ahead here, we're going to do it again, and this time I want you to tell me what signs and road markings you see, apart from the one you've already identified. So you've already identified the this first one. So you said there was a stop sign. I did. So uh, let's go and have a look. Hang on a minute. That's why I didn't see it, because we've got the piss and trees covering it up in here. So is that any... Ex well, when you get close to it, if it's visible, you need to be responding to that. So what would be the consequence if you fail to stop at a stop sign? That's law, though, isn't it? That is the law. Mm. So if there's a police car behind you, do you think they'd be having a word with you right now? They'd have the hump, wouldn't they? They would have a word with you. Mm. Yeah, because that's um, an offence. Yeah. Okay. okay. And why? That. Why do you think they'd made it a stop? That's quite. It's quite a closed off junction, really. Yeah, so, so, and there's so, that path yeah. that, which is pedestrianised. So you've got the footpath has been extended across the junction. So let's go and have another look at it. Okay. So when you're ready, drive on. And at the end, we're going to turn right again. So as you approach, let's look for signs. We've got that sign, we've identified that. Now, could you say that is not clearly visible? That's the trouble, because I, I just had my eyes fixed on the junction. And what does it say on the road? It says stop, I can't believe I missed And that. what does the line look like? Is that ah, a solid line or a broken line? Ah, so stop, just stop here, yeah, stop here. Yeah. See, it's solid, then it breaks. It's give, it's give way coming in. But it's solid going out. Yeah, that's. I just assumed because I could see give way. I thought, oh, that's all the way across. That's it. So there you go. So we. So what must we do before that line? I'm gonna stop at that line. Very good. Thank you. Any assignment there? Are we where are we turning? In? We're gonna turn right. Okay. So if I stop. So you come yeah. to a complete stop. Yep. Good. Okay. And can you see? No, I can't. No. So, so now what can we do? Peep and creep. Lean forwards first. Peep first, and then creep onto the footpath. And then if a pedestrian turns up now, we'll just see what they're going to do. So now you can see, you're okay to sit on this bit of footpath. So if pedestrians walk down here, now you're fine. Because oh, okay. you did give way to them, they weren't there when you first... Yeah, as I say, it comes to a point where I've got to commit yeah. to something. And That's it, yeah, otherwise you'd, just sit, you'd sit back here and never go, would you? You wouldn't see nothing. Yeah. stepped into the road, did we need to stop for him? Was he on the crossing? No, he went on the crossing, but I did, I, yeah. I took the other lane just in case. If he was on the crossing, what, what, what must you have done then? Oh, well, he, I've got to stop. That's it. Yeah, so that's a, that's a law, that's a separate crossing. So he did, once you turned in, he stepped out, what did he do? Back up on the path. That's it. So, you, were He'd you okay gone past to carry on? Well, so, I need to give you direction. Yeah. So, the lights, I'd like to turn right. Okay. 
don't tell me, are there any changes to the speed limit yeah. in this one? You did say there'd be double and that's 30. So that's getting a bit And better. just have a look at the stop line. So which one would you stop at? The first oh, or the second? Well, I can see that, that little cycle image. So Very good. That'd be here. So when I'm here, yeah. ready to go. Is it okay to have my hand here? Yeah. Okay. I just I know they the exam is what I see both hands on the steering wheel all the time, but I feel like to do that. Are you I'd moving? Fumble. Are you moving? No, I'm not moving now. When you're moving, if you drove a manual car, mm -hmm. would you have to take your hand off to change gear anyway? Yeah, you would, yeah. See well, it would be impossible to have both hands on the steering wheel at all times, wouldn't it? Yeah. How just, would you adjust your window demisters or Yeah. I'd just get a bit paranoid and put your hand brake on. Yeah. You'd have to add your hand simply to the steering wheel then, wouldn't you? So yes, of course you can take your hand off the wheel. So in this box, I wouldn't have to turn it like that, would I? No. So what you just did there would be unnecessary. So I could just so go in a diagonal. Was, was there an area you could go and wait into? That's them little boxes, they, they create the shape. And I feel like I should be in it, so I don't worry about my rear quarter. Turn up on the left behind this white car, leave enough room to... Actually, no, there's a bus oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Yeah. No, that's okay. My bad, I saw that just in time. Did you want to go and look at that junction again? Yes. Okay. Where to go and do that? So what I'd like to do... Oh, at the um, next set of traffic lights... In fact, we can do the old stop in here. So, how much if when these do when that Mercedes stops, how much gap are you going to leave? Yeah, I want to see a bit. Yeah, that's good. And what is the benefit of doing that? If that beamer behind hit me, there's a gap. Um, yeah. If I need to get out of an emergency, I can. Fire oh, engine if they comes running well. down here. Yeah. The fire. I mean, the fire engine. Yeah, we could, would would you? Would they use the Bus lane. I'll use any means of getting through. That's it. Yeah, if there were, that wasn't there, <clears throat> and we all needed to shuffle over, would you have a bit more room to be able to do that? Yes. That's it. Do you know what? It, do you know what you should leave if you're waiting in a tunnel? If you go through a tunnel and it all stops, do you know how much, what the highway code says about how much gap you should leave? That's more, isn't it? Do you know what it is? Five meters. Five meters. Why not? Good. Yeah, I just remember it in my theory. Anyway, direction. Have I given you a direction at the lights? No, you haven't. At the lights, I'd like to turn right. Oh, yeah, because we want to do that little box junction. Unit. That's it. And I'm going to get some more practice to do tyres and tunnel mode. Okay, so Lucas, I'm just going to ask you to look at road markings here, okay? So you've got this, what does this lane do? Turns right. Did you see what the, the lane in the left does? Yeah, it just goes ahead. It goes ahead middle, and right. Really? Yeah. Oh. There is a road mark in there that says you can go ahead in, in the middle lane and right. So, can if get into it? No. no? Okay. If you've got a choice of two lanes turning right, mm -hmm. which would be the normal driving position for doing that? Drive on the left hand side of the road, so. We do. <clears throat> so, what would be, what lane, knowing what you know now, if you were doing this again, what lane would you use to turn right? Do you know what they're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, are those cars that have used that lane signalling? No, but I don't trust it. I don't trust it. So, where do you think they're going? Well, they look like they're going ahead, but I, sometimes I see people do that and they still turn. So, they could go ahead, but they could come round. Yeah. So, when you get into the new road, what lane are you going to feed into? You're going to stay in the right lane or feed to the left? Well, if it's available, I'll take the left. Good, if it's available. Mm. If they decide to use it? Or well, there's a motorbike coming stay around the back here, would that be available? No, just stay where I am. Okay, so can I leave that with you to do? Yeah, yeah, okay. So what I'd like to do is we're going to turn into the new road, and if lane one is available, use it. If not, stay in lane two. Okay. Good. What up? Excellent. So I just wanted to talk about that. Anyway, at the next roundabout, I want you to turn right. Okay. So 
with Ford Pan, and if if I told you we we're going to turn right early, you could have just come and stayed in that lane, just so you know. Oh, so okay. we're going to turn right at this one. I just wanted to, to talk about that road market and what you do. Yeah, that's good practice. just an indication of what someone might do. Yeah. What could you use? What's a better indication of where someone's actually going to go? Uh, body language, like where the car's going. Yeah, look at their position. Okay, at this roundabout, I'd like to turn right. Now we're approaching the traffic lights where you had your question about should you have done that? Mm. Okay. So do you need any explanation or do you just should we just go and have a look and we can talk you through as you're doing it? Yeah. Okay. So what was your confusion? Was it like where it's you the should shape wait? Of it. Yeah, I get a bit paranoid that we've done this before. I spoke to my instructor and he kind of just said no and just carry on and I, I thought I just wanted a bit more but he just wouldn't explain it. Well if they're oncoming traffic, the little area for you to wait in, would you want to, how would you want to position into that? Well the shape of it feels like you need to turn right and then left to get yourself within the box but the way we're going at it leaves the car diagonal, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you need to, if you're waiting in it, you need to be in, in you don't want to obstruct cars from here coming no, ahead. Mm -hmm. so you don't want to be sticking in the road. You need to position yourself into that box mm -hmm. so you're in a safe place. Mm -hmm. And ideally, having your wheels pointing straight. Yeah. What's the benefit of having your wheels straight rather than turned in? Taking you in the direction you need to be going. So, so if you need to cross road markings to get into that position to form that straight position in the box, then do it. Hopefully, we'll have some cars turning right and you can see. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we can have another look at those road markings. Okay. But yeah, you can, if the lines permit, you can cross to get, get into, the, into the box. Mm. So if the lines are broken, can you cross them? Yes. What if they were double sodded lines? What, like in the centre of the road? Yeah, like you see in the centre of the road. If you saw them marking the box with double sodded lines, or a big fat solid line... No, you can't cross them. No. So, so just look for road markings. If they're broken, you can cut through them and get your position mm, into okay. the box. Rather than do a, like a, a shimmy. Yes, in the road. Because what's the problem if you just sort of have erratic changes of direction? You've got a motorbike just near the back of your car when it's just trying to pass and you do an erratic steer. They just go think you want to on. That's it. So we always would avoid, you know you talked about your hands on your wheels. Mm -hmm. Well, 
something that we <clears> definitely <throat> would look for that we would want to not do is erratic steering because no one knows what you're doing. Yeah. yeah sudden changes of direction is not good for okay. anyone. At least your passengers because they like <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on? Like yeah. what? What happens? Yeah, yeah, rock and roll. So um, so yeah. So we'll have a look. See if any other cars are looking to turn right. Can you see anyone with an indicator on? No. Does that mean they're not going to turn right, Dave? Oh, no. no. And what about yourself? What Are you letting people know what you're doing here? Well, I like to think I'm quite good at that, so I will make sure I do that. So where are you going to position an approach to this one if you're turning right? How can you best position your car to let people know what you're doing? Like what I did. Left of centre. Yeah. 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 So be more left of centre. Ah, okay. And then look at your road markings. Yeah, can you see how it goes diagonal? And I'm kind of straight at it. So yeah, so you don't want to be, you want to be in it and like try and position to your straight. So imagine if there was a bus behind you, mm. they need to get through that gap, don't they? Mm. So if you had your bum sticking out. Yeah, that's what I got a bit worried about. So you're going to turn in and straighten your wheels and angle it if you need to wait. But if, if it's clear, do you need to do that? Could you just not turn in? I think that's what the bit I was confused about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And just a quick question. If we do get the green light and it's clear, pedestrians waiting over there, what are you going to do about them? Do you need to stop for them or could you continue through there? I can continue. Good. No, because if we stop there, someone's going to just rear end, really. Yeah, the, what's the car behind doing? Like, where are they going? How have they positioned? Similar to me, actually. Similar to you. Are they signalling? I can't see that because I'm... Because he's... Yeah, there's another benefit of tyres mm. and tarmac. Yeah. If he'd held back, do you that. think you might yeah. see a signal? Yeah. Yeah. But well, we can't always rely on other people to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, are you <clears> happy <throat> with your left of centre position? How you judge that? Yes. I, I just didn't do it. But, so, <clears> then <throat> start planning. Look at the cars. That mm -hmm. white car. Where's yeah. the, where are they going? They're going towards where I want to be going. So, who's got priority? You're them. I've got to cross that lane, they've got priority. Good. <coughs> Any cars coming towards you? Everyone's got priority with me, don't yeah. they? So, this one. So, let's approach it slow. Mm -hmm. Then you can turn. And that's a waiting position. There you go. So, that was alright, was it? That's all right. Good. Because that was a different situation that time. Because we did have to wait, didn't we? Before yeah. you didn't have to wait, you could have just turned. Practice. By doing that again, has that helped you? Yep, I understand that. That's done. Great, because to be honest, the first time I wasn't quite sure of your question, but now by doing it again, I feel that I understand your dilemma. Yeah, yeah. So we're good? Yeah, good. Yeah, so move great. on? Yeah, thank you. Okay, what I'd like you to do, this time, because of time, at the traffic lights, I'd like you to turn. 